What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a very juicy video indeed. That's right, we're getting into some very deep FNAF lore. Or is it deep? It's not that deep. It's just something very new and something that I wasn't really expecting. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on this one certain topic before Security Breach comes out. Literally my entire plan for the next two or three weeks is to cover the ultimate freddy files okay so basically it was leaked um this guy got his hands on the full length uh preview not preview but the full book um digital version and he shared a lot of the information that was found in it and there are so many lore reveals like i don't even know how i'm going to do so many videos on this it's gonna be a lot of work for me but um, I guess I should prepare for Security Breach because that's going to be an even bigger lore explosion, I think. Um, but today we're looking at something specific in this. And this is one of the biggest, I would say, lore reveals um, for two different reasons. And one of them we're going to talk about a little bit more in this. Um, just because I want to I wanna make a separate video on the other point. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I get to the to it. So I do just want to say that The Ultimate Freddy Files is basically a book that is coming out on the 7th of December and as I said it was leaked. This is supposed to kind of be the end of the kind of what we've got so far in FNAF. Our kind of theories was that because it was coming out on the 7th of December which is like a week um, before Security Breach, nine days, um, it, that would mean, essentially, that this is going to clear up everything about the past so that we can go to the future. And it seems to have done that. And one topic that we're talking about today is this. So this is an image that we were given. And I'm just going to read through it and then we will dissect it a little bit and talk about a few theories uh, and a few more things. Interesting. Wink, wink. It says, the fire, the incident shown in Pizzeria Simulator and its aftermath are revisited via police evidence. It seems that Cassette Man's plan did not work exactly as intended. The puppet, Larson pulls the puppet from an evidence locker where evidence from the Pizzeria Simulator fire is housed. This is very interesting for, as I say, two different reasons. And I think the first one that we'll go through very, we'll, we'll just touch on it because it's a whole bigger thing that I want to go through in a separate bigger video. Um, it's the fact that this gives hints that the Fazbear Freight books are in the FNAF timeline. And I'm not just talking about, oh, it's a whole different universe. There's a whole timeline of the, of the Stitch, but no. Every book is canon to the games. And you're probably wondering, how is that the case? There's so many inconsistencies. But really, there isn't. And this is something that I've been saying since the beginning of the Fazbear Frights, really, is the fact that this could actually potentially be canon to the FNAF games. And I'm really happy that it is. I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, I, I really do hope that Tales from the Pizza Plex is canon to the games because Fazbear Frights weren't, but we we didn't really, we, we didn't know for sure that Fazbear Frights was a whole separate universe, a whole separate timeline. So it, this, the fact that we've kind of got this new lead here is very interesting and something that we're gonna have to think about a little bit more with the FNAF timeline, because there's a few things that don't add up. Um, first of all, I once said that uh, the Missing Children's incident was in 1983, but apparently there was one in 1985 now, so how, how do those things kind of come together? We'll be talking about that in a whole other video. But the bigger thing that we should talk about, and let's let's say that the Fazbear Frights books definitely 100% is in the game timeline. That means that the Pizzeria Simulator Fire didn't work. And that has many, many implications. First of all, it has the implications that all of the animatronics are just going to come back. Were the souls freed? Well, we didn't exactly see their happiest day, right? In FNAF 3, 
we got the happiest day of the original missing children and um, and well that was it really we haven't really seen a happiest day from the the souls inside of molten freddy scrap baby um, we like we don't really know because baby could come back charlotte could come back and that's something that we're going to touch on now um, of course afton is coming back a hundred percent it's kind of crazy when you think about it. The FNAF 3 fire didn't work because Afton escaped. The FNAF 6 fire didn't work. Afton escaped. And Afton escaped in a digital form and now maybe even a physical form. I'm not too sure about the physical form part though. I have been saying for a while as well that we never saw Lefty in the fire in the in the ending cutscene. And that, that there's probably a good reason why, because Lefty wasn't burnt. Lefty wasn't set on fire, the puppet wasn't set on fire, Charlotte's soul hasn't been freed, Charlotte could be coming back in security breach. This is all so insane to me. This is something that I didn't actually expect to come out of this book and to come into the FNAF lore as well, the fact that the FNAF 6 fire didn't work. Um, and it's kind of upsetting as well because that means that Henry's speech was all just for nothing. Like, this, if the souls haven't been set free, especially his daughter's soul, that speech was all worthless. It was all for nothing. Henry basically committed suicide by jumping in the fire, assuming that the fire would work, but it didn't. Let's talk about one more thing in particular, and that is Afton. Let's say, yes, Cassette Man's plan, Henry's plan, didn't work exactly as intended. Um, the intention was to, of course, set a fire uh, in the pizzeria and to set the souls free and to put Afton's soul in hell where it's supposed to be. But the thing is, and the big kind of thing here is that we do see William's soul in hell in Ultimate Custom Night and we see Golden Freddy kind of uh, pulling the strings on that. So was that real? Or was that some sort of nightmare? I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about this recently, actually. That Ultimate Custom Night could have all just been a nightmare from William's perspective, and William is still alive. Of course, we know that William is still alive, so... It's, it's, this is all very interesting indeed. Um, I don't know what to make of it, really. Um, but this kind of... It's great, because it continues the story on, and I'm quite happy if... I wouldn't say I'm happy, but... I'm, I'm okay with the FNAF 6 fire not ending everything, um, but it the fact that it kind of ruins Henry's speech, uh, it's a, I don't know what, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I don't know what to think. So what do you guys think? Um, give me some theories in the comments below and give me your thoughts on the FNAF 6 fire. Do you still like how it was all done? Do you think Henry's speech is, is still like a like a good speech that is worth a lot. Um, and of course, make sure you subscribe uh, and stick around for the next few videos because I'm gonna be making a lot of videos on all of the information that we got from the Freddy files. Um, so just sit back and, uh, and wait for those videos and they will come soon. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you then, goodbye.